Ooh, steady, steady, steady. Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. I've got an update again on the terrarium. Um, this terrarium is turning out to be absolutely fascinating, so today we switch out the snakes. So the uh, snake in the tub is going to go into the terrarium, and the snake in the terrarium is going to go out and go into a tub. I've been promising for a long time to do a video on stress-free handling, and I've been getting a lot of questions on um, socialising snakes. Should I handle my snake to socialise it? The more I handle it, the better it is. Um, am I handling my snake too much? And the switch out of the snakes in the terrarium is giving us a perfect opportunity to have a look at this little superstar snake. That's hard to say. Because he has not been handled at all. He is about five months old and I have incorporated a uh, compare and contrast between the snake in the tub and the snake in the terrarium to see how these snakes actually differ, if they differ at all, and to see whether the fact that they have not been handled makes them unhandleable. Now, I have to stress that this video is all first take. There was no reshooting of any video because the snakes didn't perform the first time around. The only editing that I have done to this video is to cut out some of the dull bits just for continuity's sake. So they're all first takes and the snakes all did what you see on the video at the first attempt straight out of the gate. So with that let's take a look at this video and I hope you see something of interest. Um, some fascinating behaviours from the snakes but also the first in what's going to be probably a series of videos on handling snakes since we've got so many questions on it. Okay so I want to get this guy out of here tonight and put him into a tub and we'll clean the terrarium and swap over but his tail end is still in the tunnel and if I try and grab him now he'll just bolt down the tunnel. So what I'm going to do is to employ a little bit of Laurie Torini's target training but I'm using a real target here I'm using a freshly killed ASF and we're going to see if we can tempt him out far enough that when he takes the prey he'll wrap it coil it and then I can pull him out so let's see how we do remember this snake has not been trained in any way Ooh, steady, steady, steady. Come on, here you go. Food's here, food's here. Come on. That was a pretty easy job. Okay, so you saw how I used that feeding response that we're so accustomed to from this guy to actually get him right out of his cage and come right out and take that rat. So he has now moved to this tub down here. You can see that he's still tightly coiled around the prey. And this is a bare bones tub, just like any of the other tubs. It's got a tub of water and nothing else. So this terranium snake is now a tub snake.
So what we're going to do now is to take a look at this guy after two days inside a tub. He's now subjected to my daily routine, so every morning his tub gets opened, checked and closed again. And yes, he has been flinching when I open the tub. This morning he has already been checked and I noticed that he is not sleeping, not relaxed like the other snakes, but he is moving around. This is quite normal when a snake has changed environment. This guy has already suffered a degree of stress from moving just from one location to another. Not that the location he's in is not ideal, it's just a change and they do respond to that. So let me move this label out of the way on the upper snake so we can see what we're doing. When I open the tub you will probably see a flinch. So I'm going to open the tub nice and slowly to try not to startle him. And you can see already that he's lifting his head. He's focused on me, he's turned towards me. This looks to me actually like a feeding response. This guy thinks he's going to be fed. So what we can do is to open the tub wider. Remember this tub is his space and he's going to be defensive about his space. So I'm just going to give him a second to snap out of that feeding response. And what I want him to do is to start using his tongue and to start moving in a more relaxed manner. I want him to start coming out of that feeding response and that automatic snappiness and start to think about his environment and what's actually happening. And we can see now that he is now starting to be relaxed. He's coming out. He's using his tongue, his tongue flicking, and he's not afraid. This is not a nervous snake as we've seen when I fed him in the terrarium. This snake is not nervous, he just does not like to be touched. If I move towards him now, he will flinch back. If I move my hand over the top of him, watch him flinch back. That's a very, very clear, averse response to my movement. He feels threatened. So I'll give him a second now just to relax again because we are going to handle this guy. I would never suggest that if you keep snakes you do not handle them. They do not need to be handled to be socialised. What we need to do is to respect their body language and handle them on their terms. So we are actually going to start handling this guy even though he's not accustomed to be handling. There you go, you can see him starting to move again. He's using his tongue. He's still quite nervous. This is going to be normal behaviour for this snake for the first few days in his tub. He is responding exactly how I would have expected him to. So what we're going to do now that the tub is open, I'm going to show you some things that we can do to make this snake relax a little bit. So I'm actually going to take the snake out of the rack inside his tub and put him on the table. This is effectively removing the snake from his territory. Now you can see that he is nervous and defensive. What I can do to calm him down, if I needed to clean or do anything, take another tub and just put it over the top of the tub that he's in. This will make him feel much more secure and I could probably leave him on the table here and go to the toilet or make a cup of coffee and when I came back he would still be in the tub. He will not have moved. He feels quite secure in there. If I remove this top tub fairly suddenly he's going to flinch again so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to remove it quite slowly. So we'll remove it. And the warning signs for us that this snake is defensive is you can see he's lifted his head off the ground. His head is poised and he is in an S-curve. So this snake is actually fairly apprehensive, but we want to handle him. He's not panicking, he's not fleeing, he's not in flight, but don't misunderstand what this snake is telling us. 
he is actually quite nervous but he is also quite handleable so if we want to handle him don't hesitate just go in and pick him up don't, don't give him chance to react or think about it so we go in and we gently you can see him flinch at my touch but we gently pick him up and you can see I'm not restraining him he's not in flight mode he is actually flicking his tongue so my job now when I handle him is to get him accustomed to this touch he won't like it no snakes do uh, but he will tolerate it and over time he will become more tolerant and less stressed out by us handling him so repetitive handling on his terms will actually help to calm the snake down we don't want to overdo it make this a stressful situation for him uh, we both want to enjoy this experience or at least have him not react adversely to the experience so when I pick him up I'm not restraining him in any way snakes do not like to be restrained when you touch them far better to just let them move around on your hand and you can see he's actually trying to go back into his tub again perfectly natural behavior but you can see that he's not biting he's not flinching if I move suddenly particularly towards his head he will flinch so we try to avoid that during these handling sessions this is actually still fairly positive this snake is now starting to sense what's going on around him and start to move so let's just move his tub away you can see that this snake is perfectly handleable he's not going to bite me So when we approach snakes, we always come from underneath. So I'm going to put this hand underneath and come at him from underneath. It's far less threatening to the snake than if we handle him approaching from above. And you can see now that this snake is actually somewhat relaxed, but you can see he's actually trying to flee. This is a flight response. He's not in panic mode but he's definitely trying to get away. Now if I put him down on the table, he starts to move in a much more relaxed manner. Still trying to get away, but there you go. This snake from the terranium is not a vicious monster. He's perfectly handleable perfectly relaxed he did eat a couple of days ago and I avoided handling him while he was digesting his meal so he's had a good couple of days and I've left him pretty much alone but you can see now that he is starting to move this is flight he's trying to get away I won't disguise that for you guys uh, he's not appreciating the handling now and he's trying to actually escape he's saying leave me alone but we've had a handling session and it's been fairly positive and the snake has not freaked out so i'm going to cut it short there and we'll see how this guy responds over the next few weeks and i will do this for the camera in front of you guys at regular intervals just so you can see how this guy is progressing and responding so not phased one bit by the move to a tub little bit flighty when i first opened the tub you can see actually now he's starting to relax a little more his movements are more smooth i'm not restraining him i'm letting him move and he's responding actually very very well this snake could be handled by my daughter even though he's not been handled and in fact let me do that okay so i've brought my daughter into the snake room she has not handled this snake before she is familiar with snakes and she is not frightened but this snake has been in a tub for two days out of the terrarium. He's not been handled at all and my daughter is now going to pick him up.
This snake is already calm and relaxed enough for even my daughter to handle. It's not about the snake, it's about us and how we treat the snake. Treat the snake with respect. So there you go guys, this snake is perfectly sociable if you want to use that word even though he has not been handled at all so there's a demonstration within two days having never been handled whatsoever this snake can now be handled by my daughter without any trouble at all thank you Tia that's awesome do you want to put him back into his tub You can see a difference in the snake's body language now that he's been out for a little while. He's no longer trying to run away. This is fairly relaxed behaviour. You can expect this from your snake in short handling sessions. This is not a problem. This does not require your snake to be constantly handled in order to get them as handleable as this guy already is. This is probably only about the third time he's ever been picked up. Now you see he does flinch if you move towards his head. Snakes don't like that. Alright, let's cut this short and put him back into his tub. We'll let my daughter get back to her PlayStation or whatever it is that she was doing. But there you go guys, that's a perfect demonstration of a snake that's perfectly socialized without ever having touched him. Let's contrast that with the behavior of the snake that's been in a tub and is about to go into the terrarium. As I picked the tub up, I did notice the snake also flinched very slightly. So let's open the lid, see what we can see. This snake has also not been handled a great deal uh, but he's been living in a tub and you can see that his reaction to the tub being opened is nowhere near uh, as intense as the previous snake. The previous snake has still not quite settled into his tub and is still a little bit nervous. This snake does know that we're here because I can actually see it breathing. When you can see a snake breathing that means it's a little bit tense. But he hasn't moved, he's not trying to run away. Again we can use the exactly the same technique for this snake. If we want to clean or do anything with the snake we can make him more, feel more secure by just popping the lid back on. That automatically makes him feel more secure. But again we're going to take this snake out and we're going to handle him and see whether there is actually any difference in the way this snake behaves to the terrarium snake. So we'll just move this out of the way. And again, if you're going to handle them, don't hesitate, just go in and pick them up. So here we go. And yes, again, I get the same averse reaction, but not as strong as with the other guy. This guy's fast asleep. This is, uh, what time have we got? It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. So this guy is actually asleep. He was asleep when I disturbed him. And that's probably all he wants to do. So you can see this guy isn't actually doing a great deal of anything. If I wake him up, let's see if I, there we go. Now he's using his tongue. You can see him using his tongue there to sense his environment. This is a good sign. It's like if you have a dog, you want a dog not to bark and snarl. You want a dog to start using his nose 
and that's exactly what this snake is doing. He's not barking and snarling, he's using his nose to suss things out. This is a good sign. Now he's flinching, he doesn't like being woken up. But again, I would expect that this snake will within a couple of minutes relax and start to move around. I'm not threatening him, I'm not moving in a threatening manner and I'm not restraining him. He is actually quite tense. You see that S shape and he's focused directly at me. He's focused directly at the threat. What I can do is to just turn him away a little bit and you can see his head does turn back towards me. He is still focused on me. So what we don't want to do now is to make any sudden moves or startle this snake. Just give him a second to suss out what's going on and to relax to realize that nothing bad is happening and there you go. You can start to see him move. This is what we want to see in our snakes when we handle them. We don't want to see them ball up. We don't want to see them flinch or jerk or try to run away. This is what we want. When your snake starts to behave in a stressed manner, he starts to huff, starts to try and run away, that will be a good time to cut the handling short. Put him back into his tub, let him rest, make sure that there has been no adverse interaction and try again the next day or the day after. This snake has not been handled at all in the same way as the terranium snake, but he's not accustomed to being able to run away because he's in a tub, whereas the terranium snake in the terranium was more tempted to bolt back down into his safe hidey hole. The snake has never had that opportunity, so I'm not getting that reaction from him. But you can see that both snakes are actually behaving in a very, very similar manner. And that's in response to the way that I'm handling them. It's not in response to anything that the snake has experienced. It's not in response to anything to do with the way that they are being kept. These are identical snakes responding in identical ways to the way that I am handling them. Okay, so this guy is now doing exactly what the other guy did. Now I'm going to put him back into his tub for now and we'll film a little bit later when I put him into the terranium. So he's quite relaxed now. Let's see what happens when we put him into an unfamiliar environment in the terranium. Just like the terranium snake that went into the tub, it's going to take him a day or two to settle. But despite not being handled, you would never know it from the way that this snake is behaving. That is what we want to achieve. It's not necessary to handle your snake all the time to tame it down. It's just necessary to handle it in a way that respects the snake. Now he's starting to explore. You can see this is exactly the same behaviour as the terranium snake exhibited. And again, if I wanted to, I could pass this snake over to my daughter. She'd be able to handle it perfectly okay, without any issue whatsoever. Even though this snake is not regularly handled, it doesn't require handling in order to be socialised. It requires handling in the correct way and your snake will respond in this manner. So let's put him back. That's a good demonstration from both snakes. Very pleasing actually to see that both snakes are responding exactly as they were supposed to. That's awesome. So you can see he's back in his tub now and because I have actually woken him up in the middle of the day he's now moving around but if I put him back on the shelf he will settle back to sleep in no time. Now you will notice these snakes are behaving in a completely different way to when I fed the terranium guy. You can see that the feeding response when there is the scent of prey in the room makes the snakes behave in a very, very different way. Handling would be 
out of the question with the scent of prey in the room. So just respect that aspect of the snake and if it's feeding, feed them. If it's handling, handle them. Don't mix the two. It's not fair on the snake and you're quite likely to be bitten. Alright guys, there's two very nice relaxed snakes that have, at least from my side of the relationship, enjoyed a little bit of handling time. I'm not sure the snakes would agree with that, but certainly they were tolerant enough. And I don't think we've done these snakes any harm at all by that short handling session. Okay, so I've just taken the opportunity to pair up a, a few snakes this evening and this is a good opportunity to put the new snake into the terrarium so let's get him in okay so here he is this is the new snake for the terrarium let's see how this guy behaves in comparison to the previous occupant so we'll stick him in There he goes on top of the hide. Let's hope that he learns where to set up ambush. And we leave him to it. So there you go guys, this video is a nice lead in to both my upcoming video on stress free handling for snakes. You've seen some of the techniques that I use for these hatchlings that um, we've just looked at today. And it's also a nice lead in to my review of the paper on sexual dimorphism and dietary diversity in royal pythons, that Italian paper that I mentioned in the last video. But I'm going to try and make it a little more interesting and relevant for everybody by using some of the observations on the snake's behaviour in the terrarium and putting it into the context of our captive bred snakes. It's no good talking about the natural history of snakes in the wild. What are the implications and what does that mean for our snakes that are kept in captivity? Because the drivers and behaviours are never the same in captive snakes. So I'm going to try and put a slant on it, put emphasis on what some of these observed behaviours and scientific data actually mean for our captive snakes that are kept in either terrariums or in tubs. I'm also going to compare and contrast the way that I keep my snakes here in the tropics with no heat mats using nothing but the natural climate and compare and contrast that to some of the natural history of ball pythons in their native West African climate. I have been promising the handling video for long enough, so you've seen some of the things that I'm going to discuss in the handling video, but I am already starting to put together that video. So stay tuned, thanks for watching, don't forget to share, like and subscribe, 